Hello folks, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this again is my Model C South Bend 9-inch lathe, and in this video I'd like to show you the difference between the apron on the Model C and the models A and B. A and B are identical. And I'm going to proceed in this video to take the apron off, and we're going to go down in the basement with it and examine it, and then I'll show you the differences between this and the more deluxe complicated apron on the other models, but most of that will be done through one of my other videos filmed some time ago and using pictures from the South Bend resources. So let's get started. Recently, I made a video on rust proofing my machines out here in a cold workshop for the winter. I used oil, but someone suggesting suggested getting the LPS number three, which is a rust inhibitor. So I will be spraying this with this product before winter really sets in. Now taking off the apron is a pretty simple job on this machine, but I'll start by removing the threading dial here. And I've already loosened that little square bolt to speed things up. And then you may need to use a little persuasion here, but it came off pretty nicely. And that's all there is to the threading dial. Quite a bit of end play on this, so I think I probably need to loosen this screw and tighten her up a little bit, but we'll see. All right, there's two Philister head screws right here that are probably out of your sight, and I've already pre-loosened them using a big screwdriver along with an adjustable wrench. And now I can get to work with my DeWalt drill and just spin them off. Now, as you remove these two screws, and that's all that's holding it on there, the thing may drop right off. So make sure you get a good handhold on it or block it up with wood. It's not all that heavy. Some machines may have dowel pins on there as well. I think the closing does, but I don't remember if this does or not. But remember the lead screw passes through the split nut, the half nut, so I think I need it in that position so that it'll pull right off. If not, I'll be able to feel that as I remove these screws. And you can see that already dropping off. Yes, and it pulled right off. Okay, now let's look at the back of it. And you can see that John had this off because it's absolutely immaculate. There are no chips in there. It's just a little lubricating oil that's actually clean. So you can see the half nut here, right here and that it was opened such that it could pull right off. Otherwise, you would have to take it off the end of the lead screw, which would be a lot of extra work. So... Remember that. Now let's go down into the warm basement workshop and examine this so that we can compare its simplicity with a much more complicated and expensive apron on the other models. Perhaps before we go down in the basement, I should explain something here. Virtually all bench lathes, engine lathes, have a rack under here now. A rack, again, is a straight gear, and that is screwed onto the bed but the purpose of the, of the rack here is so that when you turn the hand wheel here as such, that small gear is transmitting uh, the energy into the larger gear. And actually there's two gears together here. And this gear that I'm pointing to with my gloved finger rides on the rack. And that is what propels or moves the carriage from right to left or longitudinally by hand. It has nothing to do with the power feed. That is through the half nut. I hope very much you have watched this recent video of mine, number 785, which is a type study of the three different models. And in some ways, this video is a continuation of that. 
perhaps there is no need to explain much more about this simple apron off the Model C. I covered some of that a few minutes ago out in the garage shop. But looking at the front of the apron here, you can see that there are three oil points. One, this gets oiler right here. And then you've got an oil hole here and here. And the only controls here, of course, are the carriage hand wheel and the half nut or split nut lever. And turning it around to look at the back side again, I already explained the, the purpose of the gears here and the split nut, half nut. And notice now that this oil hole that I just mentioned right here ends up depositing oil. Well, it comes through this little tube here and then it drips down into this trough right here. And by gravity, there is a tiny hole there, perhaps, I hope you can see it. And that would drip right on to the half nut. And when we examine the half nut, it is in pretty good condition. That is, I would say that there's a lots of, lots and lots of life left in it. I don't see any damage, but obviously there is at least some wear. And look at how heavily that is built out of cast iron, and you're getting a lot of leverage, aren't you? Both with the lever here and the way that clamps down. So, and I'm not going to take that off, but you can see the mechanism there that John greased. Everything's lubricated nicely, isn't it? And I have emphasized over and over in my videos not to clean your machine with compressed air because it drives the chips up into this mechanism. And you're going to see from the following clips about the Model A carriage how packed full of chips that one uh, actually is. So it's a testimony to what I am talking about. Again, I have to tell you that this is very ruggedly built here out of cast iron. Let's compare it with the Atlas Craftsman half nuts, which are made of Zamek and are much smaller, and they would separate like that. This reminds me of an alligator's mouth, or an alligator gar. And then let's have another look here. I took these brand new cast iron half nuts out of this box, Ward's Genuine Parts. Well, what are those for? Well, they're for the Logan lathe that Monkey Ward sold. These are quite heavily made out of cast iron and in perfect shape because they are brand new along with some hardware that came in that box. Well, I think I told you just about everything you need to know about the rather simple Model C apron. And let's compare that to the deluxe or more complicated apron on both the Models A and B. So you can see the difference there, that there is a clutch and a feed change lever as well as the half nut lever. And that allows you to have power cross feed and it is preferable. I'm sure you all own a copy of the South Bend How to Run a Lathe book, but that's a very good resource for you. And in that book, you're going to see a lot of pictures as well. So check that out if you have this in your library. Now the following pictures that I'm going to show you are out of a genuine South Bend parts manual. When you look at this exploded view of the Model C apron, you can see how really simple it is and how very few parts that it has compared to Model A and B apron. And look at how many more parts there are to this one. I would say at least double. I'm not going to count them, but you can see why this would cost considerably more. Now, in order to explain to you all of the details and intricacies of the apron on a A or B, I have to refer you to this video. If you have not already seen it, check it out. And that's an older one, but I no longer own 
a model A or B, and that's why we're referring to this. So following here, as soon as I stop talking, I will be including a clip of this, perhaps five minutes or so of this, where I explain the Model A apron in this older video. Or you can go to this video and watch the whole thing. Or, preferably, do both. Looking at the front of the apron here now, let's just review this. I know I've been over it a hundred times. Oh no, you're thinking, but here's the carriage hand wheel, the clutch, the feed change lever, and the half nut lever. Now notice on this side that we need to oil it where they put the red marks. There, there, and then there's a get oiler right here, and uh, a big oiler here at the bottom because there's a reservoir for oil, and this is the drain plug for that when you need to get that dirty oil out of there. But looking at it now from the back side, you can see that when we turn the carriage hand wheel, there's a small pinion gear here riding on yet a larger spur gear that's uh, turning this gear, and this gear is the one that traverses on the rack to move the uh, carriage longitudinally. Real quickly, let's take a look at how this uh, apron works, and I took this shield off of here. And boy, is there ever a lot of uh, chips in this uh, worm here. But when we are threading, the feed change lever would be in the middle position, like that. And then we would engage the half knot lever so that the split knot or half knot will engage onto the lead screw, and that's how the power is transmitted uh, and the uh, carriage traversed through the half knot lever, or the half knot rather, with the half knot lever. All right, I'm going to disengage that now and we'll take a look at the other feeds. With the feed change lever in the top position, which allows us uh, longitudinal uh, automatic feeding, power feeding, notice now that the power is transmitted to the worm here through a uh, key into this keyway here and the half nut remains wide open like the jaws of a shark and as the boy that ever filled full of dirt as the worm is turned it is rotating the worm gear now I'm going to tighten the clutch remember we need to tighten the clutch and as I do that you will see that the carriage hand wheel is very slowly moving. Again, that power goes uh, from uh, the lead screw through the worm, worm gear, and then there's a gear on the other end of this shaft and a gear train, and you can't see all of the gears. But as I do that, ultimately, this gear that rides in the rack is rotating through the gear train. Similarly, I like that word, feed change lever in the bottom position for cross feed. And as I rotate the lead screw here, again, power's going through the worm, the worm gear, several other gears, and this large spur gear is turning and it is engaged into another gear that I'll probably show you later if I take that saddle off. And it is turning the cross feed screw. So that's how the feeds work on uh, this Model A South Bend 9 inch. Well, that pretty much concludes this video. I hope I didn't give you too much information. And all that's left to do for me is to go out in the coal and put my Model C back together. I'll see you next time. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now.